In this video, we review Azure Bicep variables and functions. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraltos. This is a continuation in the series on Azure Bicep. If you haven't checked them out already, take a look at the playlist for videos on setting up the environment and using parameters. In this video, we're going over Bicep variables and functions. Before that, please take a second to subscribe, like, share, and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. Also, if you'd like to learn more about Windows Virtual Desktop, now known as Azure Virtual Desktop, check out my course Zero to Hero with Windows Virtual Desktop on Udemy.com. When I started working with ARM templates, I had a little trouble understanding the difference between parameters and variables. Parameters, like what we went over in the last video, are exposed outside of the template we can modify parameters when we deploy the template. Variables, on the other hand, are internal to the template. We can't change a variable during deployment like we can a parameter. Static variables alone don't have a lot of use in most templates, but they become incredibly useful when paired with functions. A function modifies data in a way specific to the function. I know I just used the same word I'm trying to define in the definition. I'm hoping you have an idea of what a function does. It may be better to review the example we'll use in the demo coming up. A storage account needs a globally unique name. It has to be between three and 24 characters long and can be made up of numbers or lowercase letters. In the previous video, we used a parameter for the storage account name and added a few random characters at the end to make sure it's unique. But there's a better way. Instead of a storage account name, we could use a storage account prefix for the parameter. Then use that parameter with a function to get a unique value. We can then combine them into a unique storage account name and assign that to the variable. That way we use a storage account prefix and have a unique value appended at each deployment, making the name unique. Well, kind of, but we'll get into the limitations in the demo. There are a lot of really useful functions available for bicep files. I'll leave a link to the Microsoft documentation below. There are too many functions to cover in this video. The goal here is to show you how to use them in the bicep file with an understanding of how they work in a bicep template and the Microsoft documentation, you'll be unstoppable. In the demo, we're going to update the storage account name parameter to a prefix, then create a new variable with a unique ID. We'll use a couple functions to accomplish that. We're also going to update the location to use a function based off the resource group location. The demo starts where the last one left off. I have a link to the starter file below if you didn't follow along with the previous videos. Let's get started in VS Code. Here we are in VS Code. Let's get started by changing the storage account name parameter to storage account name prefix. We'll append five unique characters to the prefix to create a unique name. In the end, the account name can't be longer than 24 characters. Let's change the max length from 24 to 19. That will leave space for the five unique characters. We'll use the unique string function to create a unique variable. Unique, however, is not random. The string returned from the unique function is based on the subscription, resource group, or deployment. The value returned is repeatable. So for example, we'll use the deployment name for this variable. If we run a deployment twice with all of the same values, the storage account name will not be unique. It won't error, however. Azure Resource Manager will see that the storage account is there and complete without changes. So we'll change the deployment name to make sure the storage account name is different each time it's ran. It's important to understand that unique is not random. Let's go to the space between the last parameter and the resource. That's the space for variables. To create a variable, start with var and the variable name, unique ID for this example. Next, we'll add an equal sign and the function for the unique string. We'll pass in the resource group ID and the deployment name. That will return a unique ID based on those two parameters. 
So resource group dot ID comma deployment dot name. That will return a unique ID based on those two parameters. The unique ID returned will be longer than five characters. We're going to use the take function next to take five characters from the unique ID. Create a new variable named unique ID short. Next, we'll use the take function passing in the unique ID from the previous step, along with the parameter of five, so the first five characters of the unique string are taken. We'll use take the unique ID, comma five. Now that we have the storage prefix and a five digit unique ID, let's create a new variable based on the two. Create a new variable called storage account name or STG ACT name passing in the storage account name prefix and the short unique ID. We'll use a single quote, dollar sign, and squiggly brackets. That indicates BICEP should use the literal value of that variable or parameter. We'll start with storage account name prefix, and right after that, with no spaces, another dollar sign, squiggly brackets, unique ID short. And make sure that's all in between a single quote. That will assign the value of the storage account name prefix and the short unique ID to the storage account name variable. Let's go to the end. We did this in three steps. First, getting the unique ID, then taking five digits from that, then combining the name prefix parameter with the storage ID. We could have done that with one step. Here's what it would look like in a single line. This is simply nesting the parameter and the functions within the value of the variable. You can use the one-liner or the three steps. Either way, you'll get the same result. We can comment out the one we don't want to use with two forward slashes. Let's move on to the resources. For the storage account name, it references STG ACT name. It doesn't indicate if that's a variable or a parameter. It was a parameter in the previous videos, and now it's a variable. This will now use the value of the storage account name variable. We also have a location. We entered that manually in the last videos. Let's use a function for this example. Create a new variable called location. We'll add a function that returns the deployment resource group location. So this will use the location of whatever resource group you're deploying the storage account to. We can reference that with resource group dot location. We also have to update the resource to use the variable location instead of manually entering it in. With this configuration, the storage account will always be deployed to the resource group location. We can leave this as is, but sometimes we may want the option to change the location when we deploy a resource. We can also use a function for a default value of a parameter. That way it'll always be deployed to the resource group location unless we specify otherwise. We can't do that with a variable because we can't change the value of a variable at the time of deployment. So let's comment out or delete the location variable. And let's add a parameter for location. We'll use param location. That's a string. We'll add the equal sign to give it a default value. 
and add the resource group location. Resource group dot location. Let's deploy the template next. Save the file and make sure you're logged into Azure. Create a new resource group with the new AZ resource group command. You can name it anything you'd like. For this example, I'll use test RG01. Give it a location. This example will use Central US. That looks good. Next, run the deployment with the new AZ resource group deployment command. Passing in the name of the deployment and the resource group we just created. Specify the name of the BICEP file we just updated and saved. You may need to indicate a path of working from a different directory. Next, we need to specify the storage account prefix. It might take a second, but autocomplete should work if everything is saved correctly. And here I'll specify a storage account name prefix. Everything else either has a default value or a variable and don't need to be specified. Let's run the command. This should just take a minute to finish. I'll pause here and come back once it's done. No red, that looks good. Let's run the get az storage account command with the resource group to verify it worked. There it is, the name is a combination of the prefix and five unique characters. It was also deployed to Central US, the same location as the resource group we created. If we run the command again, I'll pause here until it's finished. There it is, let's view the storage accounts now. And there's still only one. That's because we didn't change anything with the resource group ID or the deployment name. If we change the deployment name, let's run that. And again, I'll pause here until it's finished. That finished, let's view our storage accounts again. Now we have a second storage account. And that's because that unique ID is based off the resource group ID and the deployment name. We change the deployment name and that creates a new unique ID that's appended to the end of the storage account name. That storage account didn't exist, so it created it. That's how we use variables and functions in a BICEP template. I hope you found that helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.